All right, what's up, everybody? This is Marmar Vex Forever, and welcome to the 15th episode of Let's Make a PID Loop. So, remember in the last episode, what we did is that we left off um, at the conversion, the unit conversion uh, place, and our target right now, if we are to use this loop, the target input format should still be in ticks, which is something very uh, hard to grasp, as I said, uh, as I've talked about in the previous videos. When we are uh, specifying how much I should turn, I always want to specify how, how many degrees I want to turn because it's just easy to grasp. If I want the robot to turn 90 degrees, I want to say turn 90 and the robot turns 90. That's the way it should be rather than I guesstimate it should be around um, 346, uh, which is about 90 degrees. I always guesstimate that is an inaccurate. And uh, the computer, the computer algorithm, uh, a, a custom user function, can uh, or use a variable can make this thing much more accurate. So why don't we do that? So essentially today we are going to write a very simple user parameter, just a uh, scaling factor, which is the same as this thing. We want to use the um, a, the, the computer and uh, we want to let the computer convert our degree input directly in the text reading stat, the target, uh, uh, which is the uh, target uh, format, which is in the target format. All right, so integer, inch, uh, actually it's, it's uh, degrees, integer degrees to ticks. And uh, I, today I'm actually going to uh, introduce two methods, and I prefer the first method, which is used by uh, Aura, the, um, uh, the Skyrise Vex U World Finalist team. I saw their codes, and they do, did emphasize this uh, this method. I do think it's easier and it's more accurate, but I'm just going to tell you the mechanics behind it by introducing the uh, second method. All right, so um, in here, degrees to ticks, we are going to do float because we want to input a value somewhere that's a, uh, I'm going to be like 90.86 which is going to be fairly accurate so we want a float value we call it degree call this value degree and uh, brackets uh, so the, uh, what the uh, what R did last time was um, what they did is that they tried to determine how what the reading on the encoders would be after one full turn. And uh, to reduce error, what they did is that they turned the robot 10 straight times and then tried to make the robot straight and then measure that big value and then divide the entire value by 10, which is the method to do it. But all that is trying to obtain a precise conversion factor of, um, uh, actually, yes, integer. Tab, integer. Uh, ticks per turn, and that I at that value I do not know exactly what it is at this point because it differs uh, based on how wide you build your uh, chassis, and uh, yeah, it just basically differs on how how wide you build your chassis or whether you put two wheels in the center or not, or whether you're using mechanical wheels or. It, it just basically different. So I, I would strongly suggest that you go in there and um, de decide that value for yourself. So basically, how many ticks do you read per turn? I'm just going to assume this is um, uh, 3,000. And I'm going to say that uh, I'm not sure. And you will actually go in there and change this value and make it precise. But because we don't want our uh, conversions to mess around with the accuracy of our autonomous and then basically everything is simple so you have a degree and uh, what you do is that you use this degree you, you, you divide this degree by 360 to obtain a percentage or, or a conversion factor and um, for instance if I turn 90 degrees that's basically 25 percent of a turn and you already know that somewhere around 3000 ticks runs per turn so how many ticks will I run for 25 percent of the turn so that's the mentality or the logic behind it. So let's do int ticks. Ticks equals two uh, degrees. Uh, de degrees multiply uh, ticks per turn. And the entire thing divided by 3000, excuse me, 360. And then finally we return, we return the ticks. And let's see if we have any errors. Did we make any typo? 
a program. Uh, did we make ATX per takes per turn Excuse me, what? I don't think I made that. Oh yeah, here's the issue. Uh, I put in degree for the parameter, but I type degrees. That's just a typo. All right, so now it should be all fine except for the unreferenced uh, warning, and that's basically the first method. And um, uh, let me go in there and actually show you. But this is just basically a very simple conversion uh, function. But I'm still going to put it into plug it into the controller just to let you see. And we are going to change this to float because we want to put into a put in a precise um, degrees uh, reading. And uh, right here is the target. We need to convert this target to um, the ticks reading. So just degrees to, excuse me, degrees to ticks target, which is basically the same thing as our uh, w w what we did with our original controller. And uh, that is correct, and that's how you use it. And uh, I, just, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, video, I want to do a second method, and that is when you are, mm, well, th that's when you want to use math to figure out uh, what's going on with your base, or you you are unable to perform this test uh, if you don't have access to robot C, and you just want to estimate or guesstimate this uh, constant value over here. You can use this method, which is not so precise. It requires some measuring, but I'm still going to show you. So, integer degrees to ticks. We're going to call this beta because it's a second method. So, float degree, still the same thing. However, this time what we're going to do is that we think about things this way. Uh, when you are turning the robot, essentially, you are letting one side of the base go in an entire circle. We assume that the robot does the circle pretty perfectly and it's going to be a circle. So, um, how do we obtain the value of the ticks per turn or how long you turn? Essentially, what you do is that you measure the distance of the nearest wheel to the center of the base and that's going to be your turning radius. And then you use the formula 2 pi r to find the circumference of that circle and that circle should be how long the robot should go in inches after an entire turn. And uh, using this little thing, we can convert that inch to ticks. And then essentially, we just produced this t uh, ticks per turn constant um, with some measurements, with a measurement of base. However, the reason I don't like this is that you see the omni wheels is pretty wide. And uh, most of the wheels are wide, and it's really difficult to determine the exactly the exact precise turning radius. So I don't like measuring. I always like uh, to go in there and see my sensor reading directly freshly from the screen, from freshly from Robot Debugger. Uh, but if you just want to figure out what this thing is, you can just somehow, I mean, you can just use this method, but I wouldn't recommend it. All right, so let's do this. So first, we need a float. We need to measure the... Um, Turning the uh, turning radius, and just bear with me. I made a lot of typos today, and uh, I just can't see those words. <laughs> All right, so turning radius is let's say um, turning radius on on regular Vex robot it ranges from I don't know around ten inches to uh, six inches around. I'm just gonna put six point five inches, and uh, remember this reading is in inches, six point five, and then I'm going to calculate the uh, turning. So come for circumference turn circumference, which is essentially two pi r. So let's do that two times uh pi multiply the radius turning radius. And then this turn circumference is essentially in inches, and if we convert that to ticks we should get this constant if you get this turning radius correctly. However, it might be not precise. might not be precise because of the 6.5 is kind of guesstimation value. Uh, and you should always go in there and get things more precise. All right, so let's go int because... Um, so it ticks. So int ticks 
actually takes per turn takes per turn is equal to um takes per turn is equal to inch two takes inch uh, two takes and uh, turning so we're essentially converting this variable which is how long the robot goes for its a, a uh, turning once into the ticks and uh, then we scale down this int we scale down this uh, ticks per inch just like how we did right here so we just copy that command I guess just copy that copy these actually. so all we did uh, all we did right here was to obtain this ticks per turn from the turning radius uh, that's basically it excuse me I forgot to copy that excuse me copy let's go ahead and paste delete and that should work and that is correct so that's the second method you can uh, uh, do the degrees uh, to ticks um, the uh, disadvantage of this method would be the turning radius. You can never precisely measure that. Probably this 6.52 or something. Uh, and uh, it just really annoys you when you type in 360. The robot just doesn't turn exactly that way. And that is pretty annoying. And um, right now, everything is done in our PID controller. The turning is done with um, the uh, encoders. And the turning command is right here. The turning is done with the encoder monitoring, uh, which means that uh, if some some robot bumps into you and your wheel slips, the encoder still counts, so that the wheel slipperage is going to come into play when you are using your PID-based turn based on your uh, turning. Uh, I mean, there is an alternative uh, turning uh, sensor uh, to the encoders, which is the gyroscope. Uh, however, teams have been complaining. If you you play of extra bodies, you know that gyroscope is just it's just pretty. It, it's just a lot more hassle than the um, the uh, encoders. I've used the gyroscopes in Skyrise, and their hassle is that uh, I mean their reading or scaling factor is changed by temperature. Which means if your robot gets hot, or if you program in a very hot environment, the reading is gonna be scaled up or down, comparing to programming in a relatively cold environment. And that's, I mean, that kind of sucks. And after running over for, for a while, after the current runs for a while, and the gyro gets warm, its reading also drips, which kind of sucks. I mean, because it can't. I mean, you can ensure your battery voltage is the same all the time, but you can't necessarily ensure the uh, temperature is the same all the time. And um, yeah, that is one thing I was kind of concerned about gyro. Uh, and right now, I would actually prefer to use the uh, encoder because if you're not if you're not vigorously battling with the opponent robots, the uh, using Omni wheels for a PID based turn is going to be pretty precise. Um, so that that's it. That's the two methods to apply um, the uh, target uh, conversion for the uh, PID based turning and uh hope you learned something this is smart mom forever and uh, i will see you in the next video